Hello beautiful people around the web. I am Stickers HD and I'm your host for today's video which will be about the engineer in Team Fortress 2 in Man vs Machine. I hope you guys enjoy it and let's start off. Let's begin with upgrades. As engineer you want to upgrade the dispenser range to the maximum which is the most important part about the engineer providing health and ammunition for the whole team. The second thing you want to upgrade is your building health. As engineer it is your utmost priority to keep your stuff alive basically or just being active because the sentry gun deals a great amount of damage, it blocks enemy robots if you place it correctly and you have quite a lot of influence to the outcome of the game. Usually after that you want to go for maximum capacity for your metal which I always upgrade to maximum of two units which means that you have 400 instead of 200 me uh, metal in the end. That is just enough, you don't need really any anything else. What I do always in the beginning of any match is upgrade three times dispenser range, two times my maximum metal or one time building health. That is the basic upgrades that I go through when I start up a game. When you got all that upgraded, you got all the dispenser range, you got all the maximum building health and you got the two times, what I recommend at least, two times metal capacity. I would either go for the firing speed for the sentry or for the attacking speed on your wrench. If you go for the attacking speed on your wrench, you basically repair faster and can faster refill the ammo of your sentry gun. Which is vitally important for you to maintain your buildings so they don't get blown up. You don't need it in the beginning because it is... No one has enough money for that. You need your vital things first, which is the dispenser range and then the building health. You can still repair, so it's not that much, that's that big of a deal. Now when we talk about the sentry firing speed, there is actually something that you have to know. And this is what most people don't understand and don't know. And this is very, it is almost classified. No one really knows that, but I have a very good friend who is mainly playing engineer basically on man vs machines and has, has very much experience playing engineer. Listen up, you only need the upgrade one time. If you have it one time, your firing speed for the sentry gun, if it is not used with a wrangler, is at its maximum. It will not have any benefit of more than one upgrade if it's firing on its own. The second upgrade for the firing speed only benefits the Wrangler. Only then the firing speed is increased and the third upgrade doesn't do anything. So do not upgrade more than maximum two times if you are often wrangling. I would always go for one time because the second time really doesn't matter. Now let's talk about something that you should not upgrade. You should not upgrade the disposable sentry. You should not upgrade the two-way teleporter. These are the core essential parts of things to never upgrade. At least not the two cities. You can have a debate and discussion about the disposable sentry and yes you can upgrade it if you are experienced enough to actually take advantage of it. I, My friend who plays a lot of engineer actually skills it up but only in the later game when everything that is essential has been upgraded. The two-way teleporter is the most useless thing to do actually because you don't need to get quick to the spawn again. There's one occasion if a scout runs through and even then no one will ever take it because the te teleporter is maybe placed somewhere else and you can reach it fast enough. It really does not matter. If the scout pushes through it's over anyways if no one gets there anyways. So don't upgrade the two-way teleporter ever. Now after you have upgraded everything that I suggested, which is maximum dispenser range, maximum building health, two times or up to two times metal capacity and then the wrench attacking speed, then you are free to go with whatever you like. For example, the disposable sentry. I never go with that. I actually go for resistances, so I won't be critical hit by anything that I actually take damage off because I use the Rescue Ranger which is a gun that enables me to pick up over an indefinite distance my, my stuff for 130 metal. 
when I do that, I am marked for death and receive mini crits. That is what often gets me killed, and that is why you can argue that the rescue ranger is not the best choice. People sometimes say that the frontier justice is a way to go, and really, I won't mind. I see the benefits of both guns. The Frontier Justice gives you crits if you said your gun is destroyed, which you try not to have let happen. So I don't know why you want, want to have that. But if it happens, then you have the crits, of course. But you don't deal damage anyways with your gun. Your sentry gun does everything. So I would actually recommend go for the Rescue Ranger. Also, it really saves sometimes everything because you have the advantage if you can de replace every anything on distance and don't have to physically be there. If, for example, there's a sentry buster running in, you just can't pick it up over any distance if you have the metal and then you're, you're good to go. That is what I do, basically. This brings me to an important part. If a sentry buster comes in, and a sentry buster comes in always at 20 kills with your sentry or 2500 damage dealt, if I recall it correctly, then a sentry buster comes in and tries to blow up your stuff. It always goes for your sentry and please do never place a dispenser or teleporter in a way that a sentry buster walks over it as it tries to reach your sentry gun. When a sentry buster comes in, you basically watch out where it is and when it actually is on the field. And then you can measure basically how to run, where to run and when to pick your stuff up. You only need to pick up with right with the right mouse button your sentry gun and walk up to the sentry buster. You basically walk through it. It stands still for a second then and blows up and you have enough time to get away. So basically take the sentry gun, run to him and run back. What you don't do is run to the sentry gun when there are teammates nearby. Do never do that because you will blow up your teammates and they instantly die at once. So that is one thing to screw up and please take keep that in mind. When the sentry buster then is chasing you, try to run back, gain a little bit distance so you threaten no one and then let it explode at some place where no one really is. I just cover now the loadout that I use basically. I use the rescue ranger as my primary but you can basically use whatever you want, whatever makes you feel comfortable. As the secondary, I don't use a pistol, I use the wrangler because if there is just one giant bot for example, you can shoot it the whole time with a wrangler and you deal more damage. And this is now a very important thing. If you wrangle, there's a shield around the sentry and this makes the sentry live a lot longer. Which grants it a lot of more health as the shield is active. But what happens is, when you stop wrangling, the sentry has a downtime of I think 3 to 5 seconds where it cannot shoot, it has to reboot. But how you can basically skip that is... If you pick up your sentry and replace it immediately, that makes it shoot immediately again. So you wrangle, and when you're done wrangling, maybe just right before the sentry runs out of ammo, you pick it up and place it again. So it can shoot while you repair it, you don't lose any damage. This is a pro strat, and always please remember that. What I want to throw in here is that if you use your rescue ranger, the site is being blocked by the medic's shield or any person or robot standing in between that. If there's anything blocking the line of sight, even you can see through that. For example, the medic's shield is a good thing because sometimes the medic tries to guard your stuff, but somehow the wrong way you try to rescue range it away from a sentry buster, but you can't right click on it over distance because the medic shield is in the way. That is one thing to watch out for. Second thing, for the weapon, uh, for your wrench, I always use the jack because you don't deal melee damage and uh, the jack has a reduced melee damage but it builds stuff faster so if you don't want to waste a upgrade canteen you can always build stuff like manually which I very often do so your jack helps you out with that. Now off to something completely different when there is a sentry buster incoming medics if they are skilled and very good players and I'm sorry, but I am one of these guys and I, ha I ran into that quite often lately. The medic tended to run to the sentry buster and try to hit it with the uber sword to get the free uber for his medic gun or crits creek, which is completely fine and is 
is, is a very good tactic. If it is slowed with the milk of the scout, it is perfect. But when a sentry gun is there, a sentry buster is there, and you pick up your sentry gun, run to it, and let it explode immediately, the medic has no chance of filling up his uber. Please keep that in mind. Look if there is a medic and if he's running towards it. Maybe you even run away from the sentry buster so the medic can't even get the free uber completely. Don't be a jerk. Now I want to cover the canteens. As an engineer, you just need really one canteen, which is the upgrade canteen. If you buy it, <laughs> remember there's a bug in this game. When you buy it and you have it, and inspect a team a teammate with F, with a button F as you look at them, there is a chance of the canteens to disappear only for the engineer and only for the up building upgrade canteen. This is very weird, but it is there. So keep that in mind if you have these canteens. Also, just use these canteens. I have one or two maximum in my um, in stock, maybe three if there's really enough money there. But I tend to have one or two and use them only at very rare cases when everything goes wrong. You can basically build a sentry level one and a dispenser level one. And as they are basically building, you can press the canteen button and they will be instantly upgraded to level three. So that is a very important thing to do sometimes when it comes down to just this one thing. You can also body block um, giant scouts which is a topic for itself, basically, body blocking and knowing the pathing of the robots. But when you body block scouts, for example, they tend to shoot the sentry a lot and you cannot repair it because they maybe shoot you back and you are having a knockback and flying it's away, you cannot repair. And then the sentry gun dies. What you can't do then is building a new sentry, hit the upgrade button and it's there immediately. So that is a very important thing to notice. Now that we are there at body blocking, you basically don't body block, but your sentry gun does. Your dispenser cannot body block, it will be run over, but your sentry gun, it can. If you are on Rotten Borg and there is this tunnel and there are giant scouts incoming, when they seem to push through, you can pick up the sentry gun and place it to the rather right side of the tunnel. Try to place it a little bit left of the right side, because you don't need the sentry to have contact with a wall, just let enough space so no one can walk through and you block the buster, uh, block, block the giants basically. You can also stand left to your sentry so you have a longer wall built, built of, out of you and your sentry gun. So you have a huge um, field of body blocking range basically, weird thing to say, but it is basically just like that. Something now to the advanced upgrading. When you don't really know what to upgrade next and there's enough money and there will be enough money, that is my assumption now because it's always there, you basically should upgrade your crit resistance of course so you don't get one shotted which is very stupid sometimes if there's just one crit rocket and you could have survived it but no you don't. Also when you are done with that you can possibly go for other resistances such as normal crit or bullet resistance which is okay but now here comes a pro tip i won't go for the movement speed essentially but for the jump height it sounds weird but it is very important actually there are a lot of situations where you try to jump over certain things for for manhattan it is this truck that is at the first base at the first point basically and you try to get up the truck and down to the to the um, container where you place your dispenser basically and you have to jump like three times perfectly to get up but with a jump height you have just to jump one or two times if you're good enough and that is really important because it makes you being at a faster pace it speed up it speeds up a lot of the gameplay and makes you more viable you are quicker in the action and you can allow more things to happen or you can make more things happen which is important so jump height is actually quite awesome if you use it correctly movement speed is awesome too because you can run faster away from sentry buses and be more agile but it's not that essential to be honest if you really want to you can also upgrade the metal per second regeneration but it is very useless to be honest it doesn't do anything great you can always pick up ammo kits so you get your metal back and that is why you at least 
or you should upgrade two times the metal capacity because if you do that you get more of the ammo kits you get more metal for ammo kits that is just fact something different if something of your buildings get destroyed for example the dispenser or, or both the dispenser and your sentry gun the first thing that you have to build again is actually the dispenser because there are more people profiting from your dispenser than actually from the sentry gun because people can not run out of ammo if you have the dispenser back in place I have a lot of times where someone builds a sentry gun it gets immediately destroyed but everyone runs out of ammo and this cannot be happening you have to place your dispenser at points where it cannot be run over by incoming sentry busters where it cannot be easily shot and where everyone has easy access to it might be sound it might sound difficult but it is actually quite easy if you know a little bit of the spots and i cannot show all the spots because when you are playing it really highly de depends on how you adjust to the game and how the game flows and when something bad happens you have to fall back and then try to rethink and re strategize i mean there are some set points that are actually quite good but you don't really need to rely just on them if something goes wrong you really have to think where to build next you can even ask some people where other places would be great but try to figure out that for yourself for example i'm on rottenburg now and you can see me quite a lot in the beginning at least setting up at this little left point when you come out of the out of the upgrade um bar that i set the dispenser to the right of the rock so everyone for example the heavy can stand on the rock and shoot while getting ammo back the sentry gun is like in the, in the little gap where the medic can easily stand behind and use the shield for example but you always can like replace it like back or to a complete right when the um, bots pushing through on the right side and always try to reset or relocate your stuff to where the people are um, especially when the scout cannot reach stuff and your sentry gun is just like on its own you can even consider destroying your sentry gun if it's down like an alleyway and pe people cannot reach it or the scout can't reach it just destroy it and then relocate it basically or replace it and always try to move up your dispenser to where your people are basically so they always have the advantage and don't really have to run around and look for your dispenser because you are already there that is really an important thing to notice when you have really enough money and i say that a lot because you just have to get your basic upgrade and then you can do whatever but what i do when i have my jump height and my crit resistance and my basic upgrades i sometimes tend to upgrade my rescue ranger <laughs> to um clip size and reload speed and firing speed because then I can be a little bit more ranged and just shoot my sentry gun instead of just staying there and being shot at. And I can have a greater look at everything. I can see more because if I am at my sentry gun, I tend to just see like in a tunnel vision everything because I just see my sentry gun and what's in front of it, but not what is to the side and what, what happens. Because when you sit back, you see the whole field. And that is what comes in handy sometimes. Also, it is awesome because you can, you are ranged and you help your team a, lit, lit, a lot more because you don't stand there you don't have to be healed constantly or revived and medic doesn't really have to guard your stuff the whole time and you won't be backstabbed by spies when you are repairing it has a lot of benefits rescue ranger or frontier justice it's a matter of choice basically but do whatever you like all right this should cover the basics for the engineer there are a lot of more things that can be explained and when the gameplay is there and the proper situations like come into play then there are maybe tiny things that you can explain but that is that is not my task here i just want to give rather new or people new players or people who play often and deeper insight of what to do and how to do it properly just have a, having a good foundation on which to play on which is very important for team play so i thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this gameplay and i hope i could help you we see us next time in the next gameplay and until then keep it up as always